What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, this is more of a r slash I don't go here story where a high school teacher thought I was a part of her class even though I obviously was in college. Being a trans man, I typically look younger than I am, especially in the eyes of the older generation. I'm sure my fellow trans people can relate. Quite often, people think I'm a good few years younger despite me being 5'9 and of average build. And yes, I know it's not that tall, but I still find it odd how often people think I'm in middle or high school. Anyways, time to set the scene. I've been out of high school for a year now and attend college off and on when I can afford it. This story takes place during winter break, so I should note that being Canadian at heart, I'm actually warm wearing a t-shirt and shorts in 19 degree weather. I just don't get cold. Moving on. After I had finished the semester at my college, I moved back into my parents' house so I could save up enough to get a place of my own. I ended up moving back out after a month and a half. Close to my parents' house is the high school I attended, which has an amazing track that I love running and is only closed to the public during games. Since school was in session, when I arrived, I parked across the street in order to not complicate things and noticed the track was empty except for three adults jogging peacefully. So I entered the area dressed in shorts, sneakers, and a thin polo shirt. Before you ask, yes, this is important. My shorts and my shirt both have my college's logo on them and it's fairly obvious. To give you an idea, both the shirts and shorts are a dark solid color and the logo is a somewhat large mascot outlined and in some areas filled in with a bright color. This is important because even though I may look young, I am still wearing college attire and not a part of a sophomore class. Back to the story. I put my earphones in and started running with music blasting in my ears. Fast forward about 10 minutes, one of the adults left and soon after a class came walking down and entered the track. I didn't recognize any of the students but assumed they were sophomores. The teacher, however, I recognized but I never had her as a teacher nor did any of my high school friends. I just turned the volume up on my music and continued running as they stretched in preparation for the mile. I kept to one line in order to stay out of their way as I leisurely jogged. I was running to just run with no intention to push myself, but I couldn't help myself in challenging some wannabe jocks. At one point, I stopped by the bleachers where I had placed my water bottle for a break and to catch my breath. It was then where I felt someone watching me. When I turned slightly, I saw the teacher and gave a polite smile before I continued to drink. But then she started making her way towards me. Not really wanting to talk to anyone, I pretended I didn't see her coming and set my bottle down before running again. I felt slightly bad about it at the moment, but I wasn't in the mood to converse or take my earbuds out. When I came back around the track, she was still staring at me, but this time she did not look pleased. Whatever lady, I'll be gone soon anyway, I thought to myself and continued running, figuring her problem was the fact that another guy and I were on the track with her students. Ha! <laughs> nope. I noticed that quite a few of her students had finished their mile and were waiting on some of the slower ones to finish. Remember when I mentioned earlier that I was entertaining some of the wannabe jocks by racing them? Well, this one student who was finished with the mile jogged up next to me and asked if I wanted to race. I agreed and to this day I don't regret. It. We turned around and went to the starting line that was painted on the track. He counted us off and we both took off on our one lap race. I ended up winning but I have to give him credit though. I was taller and had longer and stronger legs. Now on to the juicy part of the story you've been waiting for. Once we finished our race, we high fived and started talking about what teenage boys do. School, relationships, video games, etc. Then the teacher walked over. For the story, this is how I'll label the conversation. There's me, Mrs. B, the teacher who I was calling the uh, B word in my mind, Ben, the student who raised me, not his real name. Emily, Ben's friend who was watching us and stepped in, not her real name. I hope you know I'm giving you a zero for today. She had this snobby tone and attitude and looked me up and down. I'm sorry. What? She rolled her eyes. I'm giving you a zero in participation today. I'm also writing you up for disturbing and distracting the others. You know the rules of my class. 
You do too, she addressed Ben. What is your name? Ben and I looked at each other confused. My name is OP, but I'm not quite sure I understand. I stayed in one lane and there are others. She cut me off. You know the rules. I went over them at the beginning of the semester and once more before coming out to the track. I looked at her like she grew two heads. If I was wearing something other than my college attire, I could understand if she mistook me for her student seeing how it was the beginning of the semester for this high school, but I wasn't. I was wearing my college's logo, and even though this class didn't have a firm dress code, I was still dressed differently than the rest. Ben caught on. Mrs. B, uh, he isn't in our class. He Don't cover for him or I'll write you up as well. She turned to me again. I tried to give you a warning earlier, but you ran off and then you didn't report back to me after you lazily ran your mile, only to have a race and to stop the other still running. Once we get back to class, I'm sending you to talk to the principal. Now, I know the principal and was on good terms with her when I was a senior and briefly thought about playing along to see how things went, but decided against it because I didn't want to risk Ben getting in trouble. I'm sorry, uh, Mrs. B, is it? I'm not in your class. I don't even go to this school. I'm in college. I tug at my polo slightly to draw more attention to my college's logo and name. Uh, I'm not as stupid as you think I am. We just had a college fair recently where you got those clothes from. You're just trying to get out of school early. Being a good student, I rarely get in trouble, so to get reprimanded for no reason at all startled me. Cue Emily. Uh, Mrs. B, there are only 23 students in our class and everyone is here. Then he transferred it and he isn't on the roll yet. Or he's sloughing class. She turned back to me. Come with me, young man. I don't want you running off. If you're not my student, I'll find out whose you are. He was here before we even got to the track. Then he's sloughing. Enough. Ben, head back to class with the others. Emily, you finish writing down the names of the students who are finishing. I'm taking you, she says to me, to Principal Blank. I was starting to get annoyed and just wanted to get something to eat before heading home to laugh about what had just happened. Look, I'm not in your class or anyone else's class for that matter. I'm in college and came here to run for a bit. So if you excuse me, I'm going to head out now. Before I could turn to grab my stuff and leave, the teacher actually grabbed my arm in a tight grip, preventing me from leaving. Somewhat startled, I jerked and tried to yank out of her grasp. I'm not letting you leave in soft class. I'm calling your parents. I'm almost 19. Everyone in your class is most likely like 15. I'm in college. Let go of me. I literally have no class to skip out of. Emily and Ben both haven't left, but were keeping their distance in order to not anger the teacher more. Furious that she had grabbed and still was holding on tight, I pried her hand off of my arm and quickly put distance between us. <gasps> OP, get back here right now. No, I am not in high school. I graduated a year ago. I do not have to listen to or do as you say. I jogged past her and thanked Emily and Ben for standing up for me before grabbing my things and quickly darting out of there. It was a good distance to where I parked, so I kept glancing behind me as I jogged. She had found one of the school officers and was talking to him. Uh-oh. I don't think I ever sprinted to my car so fast before. I think the officer just shrugged it off or Emily and Ben talked to him because I could see him walk away and head in the opposite direction. I haven't gone back to the high school since moving out of my parents' house and I don't think I ever will. I'd rather not risk seeing Mrs. B again when there are perfectly good tracks closer to my new home. I mean, honestly, you can understand why she'd think you were a student student at first, but she should have just believed you after you clarified that you were indeed a college student. I don't know about y'all, but when I was in high school, everyone was repping their dream school. Hell, a few sophomores and a lot of juniors, they committed to a college in their sophomore and junior year. So they were definitely repping where they're going. Like uh, UT Austin, that's like my dream school and I used to wear a Longhorn shirt all the time. This story's called, Show Some Respect? I was witness to a fast and, oh damn, I don't work, your lady. This just happened, and now I'm speed typing on my phone before I gotta get back to work, so please forget bad spelling and grammar. I was enjoying lunch at a popular fast food outlet. 
This particular outlet only sells drinks in cups, no cans or bottles. I walked in, it was before the lunch rush, so there was only one person eating. It was a teenage boy, probably 17 or 18, maybe even 20. I'll call him Hero. So I ordered my lunch, get my food, and go sit down. As I passed Hero, he lifted his head and made eye contact. So as per Australian Outback culture, I gave him the g'day nod of acknowledgement and got it back in kind. So I'm enjoying greasy fast food when a lady walks in. I hate it when ladies walk in. She looked like Miss Trenchpool from Matilda except three times the size and looked as if she hadn't showered this side of 2010. I kid you not, she was a real piece of work and once she spoke, I knew she was as ugly on the inside as she was on the outside. Trunchpool says, Give me two burgers, extra meat, no lettuce, two large fries, extra salt, and a large coke. Real coke, not that watered down sugar free crap you sell. Make sure the chips are freaking full and because I'm not getting lettuce, you better not charge me for extra meat. Service, probably having dealt with her before, reads the order back. That is what I said. Come on, hurry up. Trunchbull pays, gets her food, and goes to the closest seat she can fit in. She religiously organized the food on the table, opening both burgers, taking the lid off cup, dipping her fries onto the burger paper. It was at this point, Hero got up, grabbed his tray with his rubbish and drink, which clearly was untouched. He was walking towards the bin when it happened. <coughs> He stops and looks at her. Yes? Trunchbull, without saying a word, clicks and points at her tray. Sorry, ma'am. I don't work here. Trunchbull giving the I'll get you fired look. You're taking that man's rubbish, pointing at me, to the bin, so do your bloody job and take my tray. I'm confused as he didn't take my tray or my rubbish. What? This is my rubbish that I'm taking to the bin because I'm not lazy. Now, if you don't mind, leave me alone. And he goes to turn away. Trunchbull picked up her tray and shoved it on top of Hero's tray, knocking over his drink and making a mess. Where the fuck, lady? This is a new shirt and you spilled my drink. Well, you deserved it. Regardless, if you're a lazy employee or a bastard child, you should respect your elders and take my tray. Hero, dripping wet. Well, as I don't work here, I must be a bastard child. As a bastard, I got no problem telling a cow that respect is earned and not given. The only respect you're getting is the respect you have shown me. With that, he threw both trays towards her, knocking her drink across the table, soaking her burgers and fries before spilling onto her lap. She screamed. Management runs over to assess the situation. To speed over the encounter, Trunchbull plays the victim and tried to lie, blaming Hero. Hero explained what actually happened. I backed Hero up. Management banned Trunchbull from the store, saying this isn't the first time she has antagonized customers. She left on her mobility scooter before police arrived. I got a $20 store credit, Hero got a $50 store credit, and an apology from manager. On my way back to the office, I saw Trunchbull standing next to a police car crying. Oh, how good it feels to witness karma. First, we gotta start off by saying, um, Matilda. Lovely movie. When I was a little bitty kidarino, I used to have the biggest crush on Matilda. And uh, now that I'm grown, I now know that the real person to, you know, have a crush on is Miss Honey. Am I right, guys? Like, come on. Anyways, um, uh, Trunchbull. Ugly in character and, uh, in just gross. This story's called, Today I Fudged Up by Trying to Shower at My Mom's House. She has crappy plumbing. I'm traumatized. I have been going through an extremely unbearable week. If you don't believe me, check my posts. To add insult to injury, I've had to stay at my mom's house for a couple of days. She has really messed up plumbing from some butthole plumber that took her money and ran off. She has never really taken care of her house, but I don't have a place to go. We only flush toilets when we absolutely have to. I have diarrhea. I have had to flush. I also had to shower. I am supposed to be seeing my newborn son today. As soon as I stepped in, it started gushing. 
poo absolutely everywhere. I panicked and jumped out, but the damage is done. I am disgusted. I changed and tried to clean myself off, and now I am trying to bail it out. <laughs> The toilet I used was upstairs, and the shower is downstairs. She keeps saying she will get a plumber, and I've offered to help with the cost, but she is stingy. I don't know how it is able to flow in and not drain out. I've tried plunging it, sticking a coat hanger in there, everything. Just when you think things literally cannot get worse, I get hit with this crap. I took a picture once, I realized how badly I screwed up, but it does not do it justice. The tub was at least one third of the way full. Beware, it's nasty. I'm using a pan at the moment to scoop the water into a small trash can, which I then empty into the backyard. I have not yet found a good way to get the shower clean or to dilute the water enough to where you don't puke looking at it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.